Hey and welcome everyone, welcome to our third video about the CAN Analyzer. My name is Tobi and today I will talk about using the CAN Analyzer to show and send interpreted signal data. This greatly simplifies the work and analysis of devices and systems. Since the raw data does not have to be converted manually and all transmitted data is visible in plain text or even as a graph. The CAN Analyzer is already up and running, set up with our personal preferences. As you might know, the window or module arrangements can be saved as your personal layout, which makes it much more comfortable to work with. But now, let's switch to our database. For the interpretation of data, the CAN Analyzer uses information stored in a database. To manage the information, HMS provides the DIM editor. So, let's open the editor to see what it looks like and what you can do with it. To open the DIM editor, you go to Tools, DIM editor, and to demonstrate how it works, we now open a sample interpretation and file using the editor. The DIM editor is divided into two parts. On the left, you can see a tree structure with all the signals, and on the right, you can see and change the corresponding data. Within our machine sample, we have defined drive as first entry. On this level, the identifier is set so the signals below drive are in a message with ID 16. In case the ID contains bits, which are independent of the transferred content, you are able to mask them out. Under payload, you can set the number of data bytes which are transmitted. You also can define whether that message is cyclic or not. Defining a message as cyclic with a certain cycle time, the signal module reports when the time is exceeded or you are able to enable cyclic transmission within the signal transmit module. Below drive, the signals which are transmitted within the drive ID16 message are specified. In our sample, we have a signal called engine speed. For this signal, we can here define the unit and the location of the data within the message frame. We define the data type and encoding and below we are able to define settings for scaling and offset. We are also able to define a maximum and minimum value for the message, which are used for scaling the graphs and to report overruns. Within the DIM editor, we can make these settings for all signals available in our system and store it into an XML file. That's it. From this point on, you don't have to search and convert raw data. It's done automatically. To use the information within the CAN analyzer, we must import the database. This is done by right-clicking on the CAN channel and selecting Signal Databases. Once selected, simply click on Open. And that's all we have to do. Let's open the Signal module. On the left, you will see the signals assigned to the CAN channel. These are the ones we defined before in the DIM editor. To show how it works, we have to generate some bus traffic. For this, we will use the sequencer module and the message sequence I prepared before. After starting the message transmission, we see the interpreted information in the scroll tab of the signal module. If you remember, within the DIM editor, we also defined maximum and minimum values for the signals. Within the state column, we are now informed by symbol as soon as a signal is outside the defined range. If we switch to the override tab, we see a list which always shows the signal data of the message received last. Clicking on a signal shows it in the window below as graph. Next, is the graph tab, where we are able to show and arrange the signals within combined or independent graph views. To show the temperature and the engine speed within one graph, we can click on the signal name and specify the signal track. In this case, track 1 for temperature and engine speed. Using the buttons with the magnifier icons, we can zoom in and out and can change the amplitude. To return, to the min 
or max scale, we just double click on the scroll bar or the corresponding axis. Now let us add some more values. To do this, we double click on the signal name in the left window. If you would like to use separate windows, you can right click and select signal track 2. We now adjust the scaling by double clicking the scroll bar. As you can see, it's really easy to display signals in the way you want it. The last step is the logging tab where you get a list of events such as exceeding minimum or maximum values or cycle time issues. This event logging gives an excellent historical overview covering all signal errors. Besides the display of signals, you are able to enter and transmit signal values. To do this, we need to open the signal transmit module. The lower part of the window shows a tree with all available signals. You can add signals to the upper window by double clicking on the signals. We will do this for now, for the engine speed and for the temperature signal. So, let us stop the sequencer module so it's easier for us to see the signals we've transmitted. Within the signal transmit module, we now enter 100 into the value field of the temperature signal. Now, the row turns yellow, which means we have a changed entry. To transmit the signal values, we click on the transmit icon in the upper left corner. As you can see in the signal module, the temperature value was transmitted correctly. Okay, this was a really quick overview of how to work with signals in the CAN analyzer. There are many more functions and features to discover. If you'd like to learn more and try on your own, just download the CAN analyzer from our webpage. As always, feel free to contact our support if you have further questions. We hope you enjoyed this video. Thanks for watching. And if you like this presentation and you want to support us, please leave a like and follow our channel. And of course, you can leave comments too. See you next time. Bye bye.